Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mark Yoon, and today I'm bringing another hopefully exciting video. So, what I got for you today is our Friday community video. Now, we have uh, a few comments to go over from this week. Uh, there wasn't that much. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world right now. So, there is obviously um, a lack of interactions online, which is completely understandable, especially in stuff like this. So, I will just go over what we have, and without further ado, let's get into it. So, the first video that we did this week was uh, Mortal Kombat Aftermath. And we were talking about a bit about that. There was a big patch update, and I gave the patch details for that. And uh, I received a few comments for that. And um, we're going to get into them now. So SolarFlow95 says, Wow, that's a big patch, yo. Which it definitely is. It was a huge patch, so much so that I couldn't even read it um, on my video. I had to actually leave it up to you guys to read it while I was playing it. Because it was literally pages upon pages upon pages of patches. There was a lot there to cover. Uh, Desiri says, I loved it. And thank you, Desiri. Thank you for watching the video. Then we also covered um, the hidden lore that's found in the museum that you unlock through playing Libra of Souls, which not many people have done that. And um, we have a couple comments for that video. So Caliber75, the gamer, says, Great video. I enjoy all the hidden lore in this game. As do I. Anything that gives an extra element of immersion in these types of things always pulls me back in closer. And discovering all the hidden lore that I found in this game and going through all the different modes and seeing all that the game actually has to offer kind of raises the score for it a little bit in my opinion. Um, I know there's still some major problems with the game, but it just pulls me back in every time I try to leave it and there's got to be reasons why and I think the lore is part of it. Ashton Bird says, I wish Project Soul would give us some information on the next character or even a reveal trailer. Uh, as I stated in the comment section, there's a lot going on right now. We have a bunch of stuff going on that I'm not going to mention. Um, and obviously, there's more important things to worry about than characters releasing on time. There, I mean, E3 was going to be in June, so like I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to release um, at least the trailer for Setsuka and her release date in June at some point this month. So I don't know exactly when that's going to happen or if anything that's going on is going to change those plans. But for now, I'm just still sticking with that until I find out otherwise. But um, it should be, we should see June and for a trailer. We should see it early July for release for Setsuka. And then um, I'm guessing August and September for Huang. But that's all based on past relevancies. And I'm not sure if any of that is subject to change now due to what's going on. SolarFlare95 says... At last, lore! <laughs> Sorry. I wish all this lore was more out in the open, if you know what I mean. Like I mentioned the Hidden Village Clan quest you can previous videos. I mean, how cool would it have been if there were quests where you encounter one of the other races and get to learn all about them, you know? Um, yeah, we talked about that. I agree. Uh, the big problem is that, like, the races are kind of unspecified. Like, they have the the winged rays and all that stuff, but that all really has to do with, like, the energies of the astral fissures and, like, the powers that are dealt from, uh, Soul Calibur and Soul Edge, possession-wise, or just, um, being around it or being seated. So, a lot of the races that are actually in Soul Calibur aren't really other races or species, for that matter, um, except, with the exception of, like, you know, the Colossus stuff and then, like, the lizard race and the humans, but, um, it would have been cool to get some more backstory on some of that. I think we did get a little bit of that with the, uh, with the cult in Libra of Souls that was using the lizard men. But we've seen stuff like that similarly in other Soul Cobbler games, so that really wasn't anything too new. Ashton Bird says, So Gro went missing after the game, and the choice, good or bad, we may decide, decide on what happened to him. Uh, without spoiling it, the answer is yes. Um, what you chose in the game actually directly affected Gro himself personally. And it also affected you and your relationship with the other characters around you. It wasn't just like a simple, um, this happened, but something different happened. There's actually a total different line that I guess can come from that. A whole different timeline, even. Um, and then we had our video that was diving into some of the mysteries behind Grow. Because there's still a lot of mystery surrounding the character. So I did a video based on some of the lore that he has in his storyline within Libra of Souls and his relationship to the created character, which is us. That acts as a catalyst for his change and the Evolve organization's change. And a bunch of storylines that follow from that. So the comments for that as follows. Ashton Bird again says, 
I like Ro because he's an interesting character and his weapon style is awesome. I felt bad for him because he had to kill his friend in the story mode and how Aswell kind of used him was a bit sickening. How our character helps him in the end is good to see, despite the I'm going to get my assignment done face, he has emotions and he does have his own character development. And that is true, a lot of his character development is tied to us, however, because his mission was his primary concern, but after a, a while, because of certain things, he's forced to change his perspective on his mission um, with things that happen to him. I'm not going to spoil everything. I will have, like, spoiler Libra videos. They're up on my channel, so you can just watch them if you want. But for these commentary videos, I don't really like when people, when I spoil things for people because I want them to just be interested in the thing that we're talking about. Caliber 75 the gamer says, When I first saw him, I was kind of skeptical. After playing through his story in Libra of Souls, he turned out to be pretty cool, and he blends right in. What the other cast of with the other cast of characters, great video. By the way, it explains a good amount. Um, thank you for that comment, and I'm glad you found it informative. Thank you, Queen says, best character in the game. Uh, I tend to agree because uh, I was iffy on him at first as well because uh, this is I'm a Taki Cervantes Mitsurugi main. Um, I dropped Mitsurugi in this game for Halmaru, and uh, I still use Taki and Cervantes a lot, probably Taki more so, but I really am into Gro, and he has actually become my main for this game, so Gro has actually become my new main, so I agree that he is an awesome character. Solar495 says, Ooh, ooh, can you do one on Aswell as well, please? I think Bro and Undy of All Organization are very welcome additions, and I hope they do more with them in the future games. I agree. I do like the backstory of the Evolve Organization. I think it lends more credence to the whole fight against Soul Edge. Um, it would make sense that there would be policing organizations that would like try and track down Malfested and try and track down what they call outsiders, anybody that has to do with the, the Ultimate Seed or with uh, Soul Edge itself. Uh, as well as is pretty cool, but I think um, he's basically he's kind of generic when it comes to like the wizard bad guys. There's not really much to his character outside of like I'm evil. I'm gonna become a god. I want to bring about like new swords, and I'm going to like rule over them kind of thing. Um, I always liked Nightmare more um, just because of the fact that he's got the dual identities and like he struggles with a lot of things. As well, doesn't really struggle with much. If they did show him any kind of uh, open character, which I'll probably find out in more lore, um, then I would be okay with that, but it is hinted at that he's the puppet that's being pulled by Algol's strings, so Algol may actually be influencing his behavior, because apparently he was with the, not with the Evol organization, but was at least a consultant, like, way back in the day, and actually did some training and stuff like that, so I'm not sure if, like, he was grabbed and changed, or if something happened to him that changed his perspective, or if Algol is just pulling his, his strings. I guess that's left to be found out for future uh, like iterations of the game, and hopefully we are shed some light on that subject, because it is pretty interesting in my opinion. But um, that's going to be the video for today, guys. I know it was a little bit shorter one, but obviously we didn't get as many comments this week as we usually do, so stay tuned for Monday on our Monday video, and again, leave comments next week. Uh, just to let you guys know, my Discord server is up, and the link for it is in the description box down below, so if you guys want to give me any video ideas or talk about videos after the fact or just bring anything to my attention or chat amongst yourselves, then uh, please join my Discord, and that's the best place that you guys can contact me without having to go through something like Twitter where you'll get drowned out. Alright guys, as always, peace.